Are you looking for death-defying excitement in Las Vegas? Don't bungee jump off of the stratosphere. Go to Walgreens and rent one of these Las Vegas City Bike Share bikes. These are actually really decent bikes. They're made by Trek Bicycle Company under a different name. And let's take a look and see exactly what you get in one of these. So there's a completely enclosed drive. Not sure if it's a chain or a belt. You've got three speeds here. On that shifter and then on this side is a dinger so if you want to ring the bell you can ring the bell and people will get out of your way hopefully on the front you've got a big luggage rack that probably hold a 12 pack of beer maybe some other essentials like a backpack how much does it cost that's the tricky part there's a few different pricing plans so if you're a tourist you don't want to buy a monthly pass so it's eight dollars for a 24-hour pass but that only gets you 30 minutes and each additional 30 minutes costs four more dollars so it's really $8, $12 for the first hour and then $8 for each additional hour. So that'll make your ride faster. Um, let's get on it and take a ride. But first, I need a helmet. So let's see if we can find a helmet at the gift shop. Unfortunately, they don't sell commemorative Las Vegas helmets. They do have the 1990s drunk spring break white girl cowboy hat. They've got the little old lady gardener hat. They've got the poser hipster Frank Sinatra fedora hat. And right here is what I need to protect my head. An American eagle and an American flag. USA will keep me safe. Very nice. We don't know where this bike has been, but we know it's been in Las Vegas. So we're going to sanitize the seat so that I don't end up with butt warts after this ride. And let's get on it and go. Now the challenge here is where do you ride? Do you ride on the sidewalk? Do you ride on the streets? Do you do a hybrid of each? Down here at the dirty end of the strip, the sidewalks are pretty empty. So... You can go sidewalks kind of slow. You can see there that also that I have a headlight and a taillight on this bike. So I am somewhat visible and I've got my dinger bell to, to ding people out of the way. Though you'll find that when you ding the bell, it sounds exactly like the Apple text message sound. So a lot of people will just look at their phone when you ding at them. So I ended up doing a combination of jumping on the sidewalk and jumping out in the street. And you can see how bad the streets are for bikes. There's no bike lane and to make it even worse, in the gutter there, the, it's pretty choppy. There's potholes and there are these sewer grates that'll probably pop your tire if you go over them so you'll find yourself riding in the street sometimes when it's empty and then jumping up on the sidewalk and splitting between the pedestrians when it's not empty ringing your little bell to get him out of the way so you are playing a real life video game uh, where life and death are the consequences zipping in and out of traffic and really just having a great time seeing the sights and sounds of vegas uh, additional variables are people are all either high or drunk or distracted so you got to be real careful watching out for yourself and your safety I am Zoltar, the Great Gypsy, and I can see your fortune. You are going to die in the bicycle accident. Ha 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 ha. Now a little bit more about the bike. So the three-speed transmission works great. There really aren't any hills in Vegas, so I didn't get to test out the low gear. The top gear is fine for somebody like me that's in kind of not very good shape. I was getting a good workout, just keeping it in top gear and spinning around town. Uh, if you're in super good fit cycling shape, you probably wouldn't rent one of these anyway, but you'll find that you wished that there was a higher gear. Um, obviously, I can't out-accelerate a bunch of cars on it, but I don't think you can do that on a regular bike anyway, as fast as people drive around here. And you get a sense here in this shot, too, of just, just how bike-unfriendly this whole part of the strip is. I don't know if they forbid people from being on bikes on the strip or not, but uh, it's definitely a good workout. This makes you go as fast as you can. It's funny to watch the video now because I was pedaling as fast as I can, spinning out of the top gear and feeling like I was going fast. But usually when you feel like you're going fast on a bike, everybody in a car around you feels like, get out of the way, stupid. So I got a ways and then I decided it was better to get off the street before I die and kind of enjoy the sights of Las Vegas on the sidewalk. What's this? A boat. Oh, so you can see the sights of Las Vegas, but there's nowhere to lock this thing up and there's no docking stations on the strip. So if you want to get yourself a burger, you got to pay a homeless guy to hold on to your bike for you or bring your own lock and lock it to a post or find some other way to secure it. Otherwise, you're pretty much married to the bike. And then the walk paths go over these escalators and elevators and over the streets. So rather than a regular crosswalk in a lot of spaces, you've got to go up and over the street on your bike on an escalator. And then when you're riding in actual people traffic, where they do let you cross the streets, you're going to find that you're pretty well jammed up unless you're totally rude and dangerous about it. And uh, here's evidence that you won't get arrested, or at least these people didn't get arrested taking the bikes down the escalator over the on-ramp. And they look like they were having a good time. 
riding around on Vegas, paying eight dollars an hour to ride a bike. Donnie and Marie are here. Whoa! Too bad I have got nowhere to lock my bike up. And then you can go fast if you wait for some giant event to be happening on the side of the road that makes everybody get their cell phones out and post up against the walls. I should have rented one of those. So when you're tired of bumping into people and going over escalators, you can just jump off the strip and find abandoned roads and where you can go as fast as you want. And the only people out there are uh, crystal meth smoking cannibals and packs of wild coyotes that you have to avoid. But if you keep going more than 10 miles an hour, they can't usually catch you. So there you go. This is a good, uh, good time to review the headlight too. So on this bike, the headlight is bright enough to light your way and see what's in front of you and what possible hazards are on the road. So I was happy with the headlight. You can't really tell in this video. Well, there you go. A little bit of light on the road, but it's, it's pretty good. And if you want to get a workout in Vegas and you want to thrill and you want to tell people how you almost died, but you made it back, you can do this. It's $12 for the first hour, $8 for each additional hour, which it seemed kind of pricey to me. I mean, I guess they got to set up a whole rental kiosk and, and they've got various costs, but the minimum wage in Las Vegas is less than $8, so if you wanted to pay a guy to push you around in a shopping cart, it would be cheaper. You just wouldn't get to go as fast or as far, and they probably wouldn't let you into the casinos in a shopping cart being pushed by a person. So overall, I really like this bike. The fenders keep all of the nasty water from getting up my butt when I'm going down the construction site street here. Um, the tires are pumped up hard so that it can go really fast. Um, it's not too heavy, handles great, shifts great, everything's predictable on it, and everything works. So big thumbs up on the bike. I really liked it. And as I race to the docking station to plug it back in and authorize my credit card, I realized I had a good time, I got a good workout, and sweated up my helmet and uh, didn't kill myself. So big thumbs up. Thank you Las Vegas for letting me use one of your bikes.